Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to do something a little different than what I normally do. I'm going to talk about my stuff. I'm going to talk about my work for a bit. I know, I usually talk about like other stuff and other products and, you know, reviewing books and stuff like that. This is, well, I mean, I've done this video before and I had posted it a long time ago along with uh, the videos to go with, I think, the f my other, th my first three books. I don't think I did it for Supernatural Pizza or Dead Man Walking, but... I deleted the original ones because they frankly just weren't that good. So, today I am going to be talking about my very first book, The Engine What Runs the World. Now, The Engine What Runs the World, like I said, was my very first book. It's not the very first one that I ever wrote, but it is the first one that I released. And with that, there was a lot of learning that went along with it. And, you know, when you're learning, there's going to be some issues. And I kind of just want to go through, like, the process that I went through when it came to writing this book. What worked for me? What didn't work? What I kind of told myself was working and whether or not it still does for me. You know, I'm five books in now. Five books, well, five books published in. I've got several more that are actually written, but... I think this is a good chance and a good time for me to really go into the process for this book and, you know, what I've learned from it and what I've learned along the way. So, yeah, let's get into this. So, for the outlining of this book, I essentially just wrote everything out, like, I, I titled chapters. You know, like, this is the outline idea for The Army What Conquers the World, which is book three of this series. And I'm not worried about showing that because, frankly, outside, out of any sort of actual context, you're not going to get any of it anyway, so I've got no problem showing that. Like, even in the future, it'll be fine. But anyway, that's how I outlined it, and that's how I outlined pretty much every book that I've written thus far. And I honestly just don't think that's working for me anymore. Um, it's come to the point where I get frustrated because I don't know where things are going to go, and honestly, I should have figured that out writing this one, because there were so many times where I just didn't know where I wanted a chapter to go, so I would go days or weeks without writing or without working on anything. And it's because the outline just wasn't there. Would I do it again like that? No, not anymore. Like, what I've got for The Army What Conquers the World, I'm going to be doing a bit more in-depth. And I'm probably going to be doing that from here on from here on out. So writing this book was definitely not as difficult as some of the other ones that I've written have been. Like, it took me about three months to write this. Or at least write the first draft of it. And, like I said... It wasn't the most difficult thing for me to write. There were a lot of times where I didn't know where I wanted the story to go. And would take some time off here and there. But for the most part, I actually did manage to keep on my schedule. For the most part, I actually did get ahead of schedule sometimes. And I was behind schedule other times. But I pretty much finished it as per the schedule that I laid out for myself. And I was actually really proud of that. I was actually really, really happy that I managed to not only write a 116,000 word novel in three months, but to do it on, on a arbitrary schedule that I just decided for myself. And this was, I think this is the only book where I actually actively skipped out on a lot of things because I had to just get it done because I just wanted to get it done. And honestly, I probably should get back into that practice because I've been really lax as of late and, well, I'm definitely a little happier to be taking some time to myself, I'm not quite as happy to be not have, to have not really accomplished much of anything in terms of writing in the past, oh, a while. So, yeah. But writing this book was generally easy. I did edit here, here and there along the way. So, but the writing wasn't that difficult for me. It 
editing. This was the book where I learned how much I hate editing. And not just, you know, little line edits here and there, like actual story developmental editing. Looking at what you've got and going, this is garbage. I have to rewrite this entire section or rewrite this entire chapter or rewrite almost... Well, I, I didn't have to rewrite the entire book, but I did have to rewrite good chunks of this just to make it acceptable for me. And, well, be, this being the first book that I wrote that I took seriously enough to do a proper edit and to get to a point where I was actually good with where it, where it was coming out of, um, I, it's, I learned to hate editing. And while I don't hate it as much as I used to, I still don't like that process. I still don't like having to go through everything over and over and over and over and over again until it's good. I mean, I do it. I have to do it in order to create a good product. And, yeah. There wasn't really any major learning curves in terms of the editing with this book. It was just something where I learned that how much I just did not like editing. The cover art. This was the point of absolute frustration for me. Mostly because the original artist that I had decided that I'd, I'd chosen decided that they didn't actually want to do this anymore, but didn't actually tell me. Or they didn't say anything to me. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting for a cover that just never showed up. And eventually I got frustrated, was like, where's this cover? And that's when I found out and I'm like, okay, not cool, not, n n not cool. Anyway, I eventually ended up, I think I went, oh, did, I, did I go through Fiverr? I think I went through Fiverr and ended up getting this cover, which I think is just absolutely awesome. Like just a fantastic cover through MNS Studio pretty sure MS Art Studio did that cover and um, I think they're still going I did look them up briefly when I was looking for the cover artist for this book and I think they're still going but I can't say for sure but anyway I did eventually get the art like I did eventually get the cover and there are some promotional stock mo stock photos to go along with it and it looked great and I loved it and honestly it was the least that I've ever paid for a cover I'm very happy that I didn't have to pay a whole lot for the cover because frankly I was still learning but I did eventually learn that cover art costs a lot of money and that this standard for that kind of for so little of what I paid is not the standard so for what I got I love it I mean I love it regardless I still think it's a fantastic cover but yeah you know I figured it out later I figured it out later on the release this was fun and it definitely got some expectations up that I probably shouldn't have had because I was met with a fairly decent first release. I mean, it's the first book. Everybody in, everybody who knows me wants the book. Because they're all like, holy shit, Qu Quinn wrote a book. Quinn wrote a book. I gotta see what this is about. I gotta see how this goes. Oh, if only I could have maintained that momentum with my friends and family. Um, it's funny though, because I had set this book to be released, I think in mid to late July... And I didn't realize that KDP, or I guess Create Space at the at the time, did not do uh, physical copy pre-orders, only ebook. And I was unaware of this, and proceeded to press publish, which released the book on June twenty eighth. Where I yeah, I'm pretty sure I had the uh, release set for July. 13th or 14th so a couple weeks early not the end of the world by any means but definitely a surprise release and people were stoked over it 
But, you know, once the initial excitement wore off, uh, the book sales immediately dried up, and... Yeah. I, I sell a few books here and there every few months. I, 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 I sell a few books of this every few months, I think. Off and on. I gotta get better at marketing. This is something that I... That I kind of pushed back against here and there, but am now starting to really take this seriously. Yeah, I'm five books in. I probably should have taken this seriously a little bit before, but now I kind of really just want to take this really seriously and just do what I gotta do to get this done. The release, all in all, was not a bad release. It wasn't a fantastic release, and it definitely dried up even, like way faster than I thought it would. But, it definitely wasn't the worst release that I've had. That comes way later. When I first wrote The Engine What Runs the World, it was always supposed to have a sequel to it. It was always going to be followed up by The City What Rules the World. Now, I had no idea what was going to go on in that book. I knew some little bits and pieces here and there, but I really didn't know how I was going to do the sequel, but it was only ever supposed to be the two books. Well, I kind of wish that would have stuck around. At least I wish that idea would have been a little bit more persistent than what it was, because I end up get, ended up getting ideas. More and more and more and more and more ideas, and the next thing I know I've got ten books planned in not including the engine, one of those ten being a prequel, because people wanted to know more about Smoke's past, and I'm going, well, if I can think of a story, then I can do a prequel, I suppose, but it'll be, like, a little later on, after I've got a bit more of the series finished. And people were like, yeah, no, that's fine, that's fine, you do what you gotta do, you do it. So now I've got what is eventually going to be an 11-book series, and... Fairly recently, I actually figured out how the series is going to end, so... Yay! And which make definitely makes me more interested in writing the series, because... It took me a while to really get interested into writing The City What Rules the World, because the more I thought about how far I had to go with... What looked to be no end in sight... Now I have an end in sight. Now I have some somewhere to go, something to aim to... And with the sequels, you know, it's, you know, this one, as I said, this one's followed by the city what rules the world, and then the army what conquers the world, and then the rebellion what shakes the world. Like, they've all got a similar name scheme, because, you know, it just makes sense, especially with a title as distinct as the engine what runs the world. It just makes sense to continue with that sort of thing, that, with that sort of theme, especially when I already had the sequel title already figured out. <sighs> so, with the new, with the next book that I'm releasing being The City What Rules the World, I am taking these sequels way more seriously. I am taking my marketing more seriously. I am taking everything so much more seriously because I want this to succeed. I want this series to be well received. Do I think the first two books are going to be the favorites of the, of the fans of this series? Or if I even get fans of this series, do I think the first two books are going to be the top books? Probably not, but I don't think they're going to be hated either. I think they're going to be very well liked. I mean, so far I've got fairly good reviews on the engine. So, I mean, that's awesome. That's great for me. And I hope the city continues to get really good reviews. And yeah. Anyway, that was pretty much the process that went through, that went into the engine that runs the world. Ooh, actually, I forgot to put in a little bit of a thing in the end called the aftermath. In fact, I'm not going to do that now. So, once the book was done and reviews started to come in, the friends and family were pretty kind about it. Um... A lot of other readers were very kind with it. I got a lot of five and four stars, and I loved it. But then I started getting some reviews that were saying that the editing was kind of janky. And that, you know, I was using using uh, homonyms and stuff like that. And I'm going, 
Uh, oh, homophones. Homophones, homonyms. I know rain and rain were mixed. So I'm going, hmm. Okay, I have to get into that. I, I have to look into this. I have to search this out. And I went through the book again and again and again. And I'm actually a little annoyed that I had to because I did get a professional editor for this. Or at least what I thought was a professional editor. And yeah. No, she missed so much. I haven't used that editor since and I don't plan to. And yeah. I did go in. I did fix everything that I did note that I noticed. And yeah, just going from there, I suppose. Is the engine a perfect book? No. I mean, there are no perfect books, but the engine has its has its flaws in its t in its typing or anything like that and a few other things. But I wrote the best book that I possibly could at the time. Will I eventually go back and fix more of it? Yeah, probably. Eventually. You know, maybe once it's at like a 10 year anniversary or, so or something, I'll do like a 10th year anniversary edition, re-edit it or something to that effect. I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. It's not a priority at it by any means at this point. I have so many other projects on the go. I have so many other books that I want to write. The engine has seemed to have done a good job of bringing readers in and getting them more interested in my other books, so I don't think it's a bad book. It just has some issues that I have fixed and some issues that I probably don't know about, but have yet to be brought to my attention. In any case, this is all I got for you guys, so be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that funny YouTube-y stuff. And, yeah. See you later, folks.